And what I love to do is take my heavy duty brush and I'm just going to brush the longer fur down over, the, uh, down over his feet. And I'm just going to wrap my fingers, let me turn so you can see here at home. I'm going to wrap my fingers right around his foot and I'm going to clear the bulk of the hair off of his foot and off of his pad. And then I'm going to come in and address in between his digits. I'm just going to come in and softly scoop out in between his toes and the pads of his feet with his 40 blade. And then I'm going to move to the back foot. Brush that hair down and over his foot pad. I'm going to keep his foot as low to the table as I can and still get the job accomplished. You can notice how I'm wrapping my hand right around his foot. I'm not, this is making it so I don't cut up into his foot pads or cut up into the side of his foot, which we want that longer coat for a nice full round foot. Come over to the third foot. Again, brush that coat down. Wrap my fingers right around the edge of that foot pad. Trim off the excess coat. And then I'll move my hand a little bit to free up those pads and trim in between the pads. Just using a very soft touch. That's what's the beauty of this 40 blade. Is you, it just cuts through the coat like butter. You hardly have to touch it at all. You don't have to dig into those crevices. You just let it glide over the foot. And on the final foot, again, wrap my fingers right around the edge of that foot. Cut the excess of coat off. Don't want to cut up into the side foot at all. I'm going to clean those crevices out and just address a little bit between the toes. Now I have removed the excess length off of his feet. I'm going to come on in. I'm going to address all of his feet. I'm going to go ahead and round his feet and for that I like to use a little smaller shear. This is a curved shear versus a straight shear. I'm going to go ahead and use a combination of a curve and straight but both smaller shears. A little shorter but have got real nice blade action. And when I'm trimming feet, if it's already nice and natural round, I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. I've got some feet that need a little more work than others on him, but I want his toes all pointing forward. And I'm just going to tidy it up so there's no long strays popping out. Love a nice, neat, round little foot. We'll turn and do this other back foot. This one's a little messier than the first one. He's like, lady, don't trim my toes. I ask him to set his foot down. Now he was being a little ticklish on that foot, so what I'm going to do is just gently hold here so I can feel if he's going to pick up and kick. I can feel his muscle tense up a little bit, which would be my indication. Maybe I need to not close my shear down. He might just kick as the shear's tickly. I'd be ticklish too. And just work around that foot, tidy it all up, comb it down, check it one more time. Another thing you can do is just I'm holding just the back of the thigh here in his stifle joint. I'm just lifting his leg up and out a little bit and I look for a U right here. Let me see if I can turn it so that you can see it. I'm looking for a nice soft U right here. He's just a little bit more off the tip of his toe. You can see a little bump right here, or at least from my angle I can see it. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. But can you see that nice soft U shape that we've got going for this foot? Hey, buddy. See that? That's what you're looking for. Go ahead and set that foot down. Now we'll address the fronts. Comb all this coat down. I have a feeling he's going to dance a little bit on his front. He's not putting a lot of weight on his front, so I'm going to go ahead and just ask him to stand 
on three legs. I've just lifted up this other front foot. I'm going to cut straight across the toes. He's a little easty westy front. We're not going to be able to fix all of that, but we'll help him out a little bit, make him look like he's standing a little square. He also, even though we trimmed his toenails, his toenails are pretty long. So I'm bumping right up against the, bla or the uh, nails as I'm trimming here. That 40 blade does a really nice job tidying this foot up to minimize how much I have to scissor around it with an open bladed shear. Now when you're working around the pads of the foot, it's really important that you never pick the foot up and scissor underneath the foot because it's so easy as you open the blades up to accidentally catch a pad. This is the last thing you want to have happen. It is um, normally very difficult to, to bandage and heal and the last thing any of us ever want to do is injure a dog so the best way is just practice safety don't ever pick up a foot and scissor blindly under the pad of the foot with an open bladed shear doesn't mean you don't ta you've got to still check it you got to look at it but there's ways that you can do it safely so the dog is never cut accidentally again I'm right up I don't know if you can see that. I am right up against these nails. If I clear this hair, you'll actually see them pop out. Now I can see what I'm doing here. I'm safe to come in. I'm just using the very tips of my shears to clear that coat right around the nail bed. No risk of accidentally trimming the, the pad. All right, so we're going to finish up. You've got to put your foot down. Just take the last few little strays off this foot here and then move on to his last foot. Again, comb it all down. Yeah, turn you so the folks at home can see. Come on, Tom. And again, he really wants to dance on that foot. He does need to stand up. And I'm just going to go ahead and lift this one foot up so that he's got to put his weight. He'll st he still feels like he wants to jump. He's going to give me a hop. I'm going to trim this long coat just at the very front of the foot. I want his feet pointing forward. And then I'm going to take off this long coat on the side. And again, I'm butting right up against the nails. He's got some pretty long nails. And to me, it's more important to get the nails as short as you can, but not bleed them. So he's got some long quicks, and we couldn't take his nails quite as short as I would love to see them but I don't want to uh, make his nails bleed either. The trick with uh, toenails is get them as short as you can without making them bleed. And then I'm going to come around here and again slide that shear in. He says, oh, it tickles. I can tell he's almost ready to dance on me. I take off the long coat. Just rounding this foot up. Stand, buddy. Come around this way. There we go. He really doesn't want to let this foot sit on the table. So now I've got, I'm holding him just up at the top of the elbow, and I'm just putting a little bit of downward pressure onto his leg. So that, again, I know if he's going to pick up his foot, I'm not going to accidentally cut into the coat as he's picking up his foot. That's called zigging when you should zag. But I always like to keep one hand on my dogs almost at all times so I can feel their muscles and I can feel when they're going to move. I always like to anticipate what they're going to do before they do it. And the best way to do it is keep your hand on that dog. All right, so we've got all of the four feet pretty much rounded up. Before I move on to the head, I'm just going to go and touch these legs up with thinning shears and then we'll move on to the head.